In this video demonstration, I'd like to cover some work we've been doing around Go1 high-level control and ROS. Now, this is a repo that I've been working on uh, just over the holidays, and we'll continue to uh, put examples in here. But the first thing that I want to cover is just being able to uh, use the turtle sim to simulate a path and then being able to take that same code and implement it with our Go1. So I'll go ahead and show you the source directory. What we'll do is uh, walk through this Python example. Now this Python example will use the uh, turtle1 command velocity topic, and that will allow us to basically uh, control the turtle simulated in a circular pattern. And then what I'll do is I'll demonstrate using pretty much the identical code except written in C++ to be able to uh, publish a twist message type to the command velocity topic on Go1. And that will allow us to, one, see the simulated turtle follow a path, and then two, see Go1 do the exact same thing. You'll find in the readme notes, I just have a series of steps. These are the steps we'll go through in this tutorial, and it'll make it really easy to follow along. I will mention that you should have Docker installed on whatever operating system that you prefer. In my case, I'll be running my host as Windows 10, and then a Docker desktop running on top of that. So I'll go ahead and start by, you can either uh, open this with GitHub Desktop, clone it, or just download the zip file. So I'm going to go ahead and download the zip file, unzip it, and we'll get started. I've gone ahead and unzipped the file, and this is the root directory. I will open a terminal, and this will allow me to launch the uh, Docker container. So looking at the command, in the readme file, I'll explain what's going on. We're going to be able to map a port 6080 to 80 in the container. That will allow us to access the remote desktop, which is a really cool feature uh, of this image. And then we're going to take our current directory. We're going to map it to a Catkin workspace in the source directory. That will allow us to uh, do the build. Now, this uh, container or image already has ROS installed, which makes it uh, super simple for us to be able to get up and running. We'll have the shared memory size at 512, and then I've given a name, go1-ROS-testing. You can call that uh, whatever you like, but we'll just use the default for now. So I'm going to copy this command, put it in here. So now our container is up and running. So let me just demonstrate. We'll go to localhost 6080. And that should uh, take us right in to the instance. So the next thing I'll do is I'll go to System Tools and Terminal and just demonstrate that in our Catkin workspace in the source directory, which we just mapped to our host, you'll see the code that we downloaded and unzipped from GitHub. Now, the next step that is required is we want uh, the Unitree legged SDK to be available to us so we so that we can build these examples and i want to uh, make a call out here so if you're not familiar with the legged sdk i'm going to go over to the repo and demonstrate that uh, we need to pull this tagged version the 3.8.0 so when i switch to uh, this version you'll just see here in the notes that uh, go one is supported so we want to make sure that we grab uh, this tagged version. And the way we do that is we'll clone it, but we'll give it uh, this tagged branch name of 3.8.0. I'll copy this. And then one thing that we'll need to do because of the way this remote desktop works is I'll need to put this into the clipboard. So I've gone ahead and pasted that there. And that will allow me to then uh, do the clone directly in the container by pasting it in. So I'll go ahead and run this. It will pull the uh, legged SDK at that version. And then we'll see that inside this folder, we'll have our 
cloned repo that we downloaded unzipped and then uh, the legged SDK at the same level. So the next thing that I'll do is I'll go back one directory and then I'll run uh, the cat can make command. You'll notice that the build is happening. We can see our examples here. And finally, one thing that I'll do is I'll go back to the terminal. Should have done this earlier, but I'm going to open up uh, the sample code and Visual Studio code uh, just to give a demonstration of some of the things that are happening. So in the source directory, we're going to uh, start off by running this uh, circle walk Python script. Once again, this will allow us to interface with the turtle sim and uh, make it simple for us to sort of test our example before we run it on Go1. I always recommend just gaining a high level understanding of what your code is doing uh, in the simulator before you actually launch it on the real hardware. I'll head back over to the Docker container and we're going to open a couple more tabs. We need to be able to run the uh, turtle sim as well as ROS core and then our examples. So I'll start off with running ROS core. So now that's running. Then we're going to do a ROS run our turtle sim node. Okay, so we can see the turtle sim here on the right side of the screen, which is great. So we'll do the source, our development setup.bash. And one thing you may or may not be aware of, you need to always, uh, when running Python, make sure that your script is executable. So I'm going to go ahead and make that executable. It's in our source, go one math motion, and then our circle walk pi. So now that that's executable, so I'll go So now we're going to run the go one math motion package with a circle walk dot pi. What we should see is that, uh, my apologies, that actually requires a parameter. So we're gonna do 0 0.5, a radius that's 0 0.5 meters. And then we'll see our a turtle go counterclockwise with a 0 0.5 meter radius. So let me just change this up real quick and demonstrate that if I go back to our VS Code example, let's say that we want to have it go uh, clockwise. So this angular.z parameter of this twist message, by default positive value will send us in a counterclockwise rotation negative value will send us in a clockwise rotation. So I've changed that from one to minus one. And then we're going to do this again. And now we should see that our turtle is now going in a clockwise rotation. So I encourage you to experiment with some of these different parameters that are linear values as well as angular. And just make sure you do this in the turtle sim first so you know what to expect with Go1. So now I'm going to uh, power up Go1 and let's uh, run the example of the circle walk, a C++ file where we're going to have a radius of half a meter and then we're going to go counterclockwise and then I'll do it again going clockwise. Let me go ahead and close turtle sim. You'll see, and then I'll stop my ROS core. And the next thing I do, and I'll go ahead and connect to Go1. So this is a example. We went ahead and compiled the code earlier. I'll just do it again, just to demonstrate. And then we're going to launch the Go1 math motion package and then circle.launch file. This launches the necessary node and uh, publishes to the topic. So let's go ahead and see what happens. And as you can see, we have a Go1 running nicely. 
in a counterclockwise rotation just like we saw in the turtle sim. So what I'll do now is I'll just press control C on the keyboard. Everything is now stopped. I'll go ahead and reposition go one. I'm using my remote controller and let's go ahead and open up our code example for circle walk C++. I'm going to change this uh, rotation to a negative one so that now we should uh, be able to walk in a right-handed circle. I'll save that and keep in mind we will need to go ahead and recompile our code. So we'll go in, I'll go up to cat can make. You'll see here that it says uh, that it's rebuilt the circle walk example and We'll go ahead and launch this and what we'll see is go one, hopefully walk in a clockwise fashion. So we'll go ahead and control C. The accuracy is actually uh, pretty good. I've been quite impressed with how uh, go one performs when publishing the twist message. That was an overview of uh, this project we've been working on just to really gain a better understanding of what's capable uh, with ROS and Go1, as well as trying to work towards just uh, simplifying the onboarding process. There's a lot to learn about the architecture and the system, as well as programming. So hopefully uh, this video was helpful. We'll be working towards adding some more examples and more fine-grained control over Go1 uh, using ROS. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.